Welcome to Mission Majima, Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about Mission Majima. So Mission Majima is an in-depth study of the Majima Nikaya, that is the middle-length discourses of the Buddha. And that's this second volume of the Sutta Pitaka of the Pali Canon. It comes after the long discourses, which are longer than the middle length. It comes before the Sangyutta Nikaya, which is the connected discourses on different subjects, and the Anguttara Nikaya on uh, numerical ordering. So this is the classic brown translation by Bhikkhu Nyanamoli and Bhikkhu Bodhi by Wisdom Publications, and largely we'll be referring to and quoting from that edition, but people are welcome to read any edition. And why we talk about people is why we talk about a mission. So why it's a mission is because what we'll do is attempt to, with all of you, with anyone who wants to come along and join the party, um, is to read the whole Majima Nikaya. And you and I will be releasing a new video talking about each subsequent sutta starting next week, where we go into the Mula Pariyaya Sutta, the root of all things, the first discourse, and we'll give um, next week and all subsequent weeks uh, attempt to give a nine-minute Majima summary and short conversation where you and I draw out our own highlights and favorite parts of the sutta. And we'll do that for 152 weeks because the Majima Nikaya is 152 mm -hmm. discourses long and we'll do one a week. And so that's about three years. So a bit of a commitment. If you join any time, we'll have all the videos on uh, in a playlist. So if you join late, no worries. You can just start where you are, and um, yeah, it'll just encourage everybody to come along. It's a great collection. And uh, what happens after the YouTube video? Great question. So after the YouTube video, we will go to Zoom. So we'll release the videos at 5 o'clock p.m. every Sunday, and then after that, we'll have a link on our website mm. to and a link in these YouTube videos to the Zoom room, and that's where people can go to have more conversation to actually interact with one another mm -hmm. and the way this will be most potent for everybody is if people read and when you read you'll bring your own perspective and um, I always find it fascinating how people bring different perspectives to the suttas and mm -hmm. this is my general idea around my feeling of why sutta study is important um, especially in a group setting you get to um, learn different aspects almost always when I discuss a sutta in a group setting, people bring out other things that I hadn't noticed. And one general reason for studying the suttas in general is this quote from the Dvedavitaka, the two kinds of Dot Sutta, mm -hmm. Majima number 19, where the Buddha says, whatever one thinks and ponders upon, that will become the inclination of one's mind. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing to do. If, if you realize that what you think and read and take in and mm -hmm. consume has an effect on the mind, then you want to be taking in good things. And this is, uh, yeah, the Buddha's words. So, one of the best things. One yes. of the best things. Hmm. So, what's your relationship with the Majjhima Nikaya? Why, why do you feel it's a worthwhile project that we're starting upon? Um, it's, you know, it was one of the first, it was perhaps the first collection which, which I read and I think which most people have uh, explored. And, where the Samyutta, the connected discourses, or the Anguttara, the numerical, they're filled with these, you know, wonderful teachings from the Buddha. The Majjhima Nikaya features the widest array of contexts and stories. You have the Buddha speaking with monks, with nuns, with lay men, lay women, with gods. And there's a drama to these different um, scenarios and storylines that play out. Um, that really have an emotional impact and give context. You have the Angulimala Sutta about the Buddha helping redeem Angulimala, this famous or infamous murderer. You have the Ratapala Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 82, where um, a young man goes forth um, when his parents refuse to allow him to go forth. He uh, basically fasts until they, they let him. You have these uh, pretty amazing um, flashes of uh, these moments from from the Buddha's time, which make this not just an intellectual uh, exercise at all, but something deeply affecting in the heart. So I found I always come back to this collection and I, I love it. I love that we're taking this much time with it. 
What about you, uh, John? Why? What has the Majjhima Nikaya meant to you, or are there any particular discourses that sort of have resonated over the years? Yeah, actually, uh, one thing I love about the Majjhima Nikaya is that it has all the colorful stories, like you're talking about, uh, which I love. They give context. Um, mm. They paint a bigger picture. The Buddha was a human, um, you know, in the in these suttas, but. Actually, my first introduction to suttas was through the Satipatthana Sutta, which is Majjhima Nikaya number 10, the foundations of mindfulness. And yeah, basically you've got the three, arguably the three most um, meditation specific discourses in the mm. whole Pali Canon within the Majjhima Nikaya. You've got the Satipatthana Sutta, the foundations of mindfulness, number, uh, Majjhima number 10, You've got the Anapanasati Sutta, Majjhima number 18, that's the discourse on mindfulness of breathing. And you've got the Kayagata Sati Sutta, mm. uh, Majjhima number 119, about mindfulness of the body. And really for myself, and I think for many people, that's our introduction to Buddhism. We, don't, mm. we weren't born Buddhist, many of us, um, but we come to the discourses because we've come to meditation and we see that the mm. meditation has fruit and benefit in our lives and then when we read the suttas we get more context and realize um, why we're meditating and maybe how to meditate more in the hmm. Anapanasati Sutta we have 16 steps that the Buddha lays out so hmm. that's just yeah a few thoughts I mean the Majjhima is so deep um, hmm. yeah and for yourself do you are there any particular suttas that you might be able to pull out as being specifically resonant or ones which you've come back to again and again? Yeah, the um, ones that really, I mean, before I kind of answer that, I think what you spoke about with how these teachings kind of can, can resonate and they're ones you keep coming back to, it's really true. Um, and I love that we're taking the time to discuss um, and and stop and really you know, dive into these together because there's phrases you read the first time and you don't realize the depth. Um, there's one phrase that has been resonating and echoing through my life ever since I read it again and again, and it's, um, one becomes sensitive to the pleasure of being blameless. And just some of these teachings until you've kind of held them in your hand and that these gems and you just have to let them collect light and, and then you really understand what a treasure they are. And as to the suttas that have, you know, I've come, I really have appreciated, there's just these hidden gems to put it like, you know, to use that terminology again, there's um, Majjhima Nikai 28, the elephant's footprint, where you see Venerable Sariputta, how each teaching's a, a hologram and hidden in each teaching are all the other teachings. He talks about suffering as the five khandas, then he zooms in on the form khanda, uh, and then he draws that out into earth and equanimity and loving kindness. And it's this profound movement through the whole strata of teaching. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. This is one of the projects I've been most excited for us to do together. To say one thing, so we'll have a number of features that we have uh, in each of these videos. So we will yeah, give a summary, we'll have a little bit of back and forth question, and then we'll have a particular quote that's meaningful to one of us or to both of us. And then we'll also have a poly word of the day or week. And I look forward to doing this with you and look forward to connecting with everybody who's able to make it. You can do it, 152 suttas. It might sound like a lot, but it's not much. And it's all great. Ajahn.